Great stuff. Here's hoping that you had a fantastic weekend. Uh, my name is Prosper Taruinga, and this is the second version of today's live show. For those that have been watching yet, yeah, let's just continue from where we left off. But if you're just tuning in, we're talking about how to actually position yourself so that you become the go-to person in your niche, all right? So, you know, I'm, 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 I've been talking about this for quite a while in as much as a lot of us are being inundated with so much information, we're being inundated with so much content, so much that we do not quite know how to differentiate what is real and what is not. So there's been a rise of, first of all, fake experts, second of all, fake news, and third of all, just people that are just too loud on the internet. Now, how are you as a person going to be able to differentiate yourself from the noise? My name is Prosper Taruinga, founder and CEO of Live Long Digital, where we actually help you start, scale, and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And we also, in this Lunch and Learn, try and help you to actually earn more money with less struggle. Okay, so the main topic that we're talking about today is how to actually position yourself so that you are a person that you are the go-to person within your industry. Now, I see Nicole just tuned in. Thank you so much, my love, and thanks for the patience. The previous one, you know, was um, acting up. Now, I'm just going on on raw diet. And Scott Keating, thank you so much. I can't wait for our show so we can get to talk and find out how you are also positioning yourself in your area there. Right, so I've got a big question for you. All right, over the weekend, it was Father's Day. Everybody else was out doing whatever they were doing, barbecuing and maybe hanging out with family, etc., etc. Do you actually remember all the messages that you saw, um, you know, on your newsfeed? Do you actually remember all the ads that you probably saw while you were out? Obviously, maybe you don't, right? See, the reason is we are now being bombarded by a lot of information. We, we have this constant, you know, data dump that's happening on the internet. And if you're not, um, you know, if you're not differentiating yourself in this market and if you're not taking a stand to make yourself look different you will be swallowed by this whole content monster that we have created for ourselves all right um scott says looking forward to it also mate thank you so much and uh nicole it's father's day in australia yes it was over the weekend um and a lot of fathers were posting their content and showing how they're really really excited to be um with their kids now i had asked a question earlier on i want you to let me know the thing that you do and who you do it for is it a product that you sell or do you sell a service can you type in if you sell a product or you sell a service all right the reason why i'm asking this is if you sell a product what are you doing to make sure that your product is different when your customers are looking for it on the shelf? What are you doing to make sure that your service sticks out so that people can remember you even if they have not heard about you in the next or last six months, all right? The reason why this is all happening um, is because somebody somewhere at some point told marketing people that content is king. And you know what happened? Marketers are always ruining things and now everybody and their dog are putting out content, making it hard for the real people like you and me to actually stand out. So that's the reason for this show today, to actually show you how you can stand out in a whole sea of all this content so that people would know, like, and trust you, okay? Now, the reason why this is very paramount and important is because I know that people are coming to the internet to get information. Now, if your brand is not providing that information or if Nicole is not writing out content or Shu Vang is not doing anything of that, nobody's going to know you, nobody's going to trust you, and nobody is going to definitely do business with you. You know why? People do business with those that they know, like, and trust, all right? So I want you to make sure that every time that you're communicating, you're mindful of the fact that are you adding value or are you just taking up space? All right. The reason why that is very, very important and you should now start being mindful about it is because at the end of the day, you get paid in direct proportion to the value that you're bringing onto the marketplace. 
All right. Whatever you are doing to help somebody go away from whatever problem they might be facing is what exactly people would pay you for. You know why? Because nobody wants to stay in pain. Now, how are you providing value? How are you differentiating yourself from the competition that's just looking to sell, sell, sell and not actually doing anything to get something in return? The one reason that we all know as humans is we are always wanting to reciprocate to somebody who is offering us value. If somebody gives you something that's going to help you, what do you do in return? You reciprocate that with either your credit card or a thank you, a hug or whichever way you thank people. All right. Now, what are you doing to solicit all of that from your customers? What are you doing to solicit a thank you and a remembrance through the experience that you're offering your customers? All right. So some people think right now is is a time to just start having a Facebook page or having a website and then you build it and then they will come. That, my friend, has, you know, has, has, has been a theme of the past. Now, anybody with, um, you know, track pants or a T-shirt, a cell phone, a mobile phone or an iPad or a laptop can call themselves an entrepreneur. How are you going to stand out from people that are not really meant to be on the market while you actually do have a voice, a message that needs to be heard out there? It's getting harder and harder and harder, but in also in retrospect, respect it's getting easier and easier to reach out to your customers we've got all these tools now on social media you know this facebook live that we're on right now where i can speak directly to michael i can speak directly to esther i can speak directly to gretel i can speak directly to paul i can speak directly to scott dear and christy dunbar paul carroll all of these people are watching me as it is happening what are you doing in order to be in front of your customers when they need you? All right? Because you are only, people would only remember you because they need something from you. Now, what is it that you are doing so that you are front of mind of your customers, not you're only wanting them because you want to pay bills in your house? Because that's the only reason that people um, are, 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 you know, putting out ads there or coming on social media. When a bill arises within their business, when a bill arises within their house, that's when they then just jump onto social media and hope that people would... Um, you know, people would, uh, would, would come and, and listen to their stuff. Now, Paul says, we are about to release a neck brace into the world market. Our device is the only one of its kind in the market. And the Formula One, Indy car, whatever, whatever. I can see that you're using my platform to plug your product there. Normally, it will be not so cool, but it's all right. Okay, I want to use you as an example because you are an example of somebody who doesn't show up for their people. This audience is not even an audience that you're supposed to be putting out stuff about the neck brace and you're not positioning yourself as a person that your clients need to be knowing. Right about now, you haven't figured out if any of us drive Formula One cars. Right about now, you haven't figured out, oh, you haven't given us enough information for us to actually know what it is that you do and why we should care about the neck brace. So you haven't positioned yourself and you're a typical example of people that are just spraying and praying and hoping that the market is going to reciprocate with whatever gunk you're putting out there. All right, Paul, that was definitely for you. All right, the, um, the, the one guy. So at the end of the day, what, what we tend to realize is we are so confused about what positioning is. All right, Paul says, being consistent uh, on my follow-ups and showing general interest in their life, it's not easy. Um, it's not always about my product. Exactly. People don't care what you are selling. People care what you can do for them. All right. People care what it is that you can do for them because everyone is trying to run away from a problem. Everyone is trying to run away from some sort of pain. Now, what does your product position yourself as the person that can solve that pain? How do you help people alleviate themselves from that pain? That's positioning. When customers know that you are the go-to person for X, Y, and Z, of which you have clearly articulated what X, Y, and Z is, 
people will know, like, and trust you, and they will trust you to be the person that can help them with their uh, problems. And Kirsty says, how do I go forward in hair, makeup, tanning industry, wanting to know how to stand out? Okay, now, hair, tanning, and hair care products is the easiest, all right? Every woman wants to look beautiful in the morning. They, um, what was your name again? Christy. Christy, every woman wants to look beautiful, all right? But I know the people that are in your industry, you do not care about your customers. You care about closing the deal. What you need to do is every single morning for 30 minutes, go on a Facebook Live. Show people how to put a mascara on in a way that lasts the whole day. Show ladies how to put lipstick on in a way that doesn't stick onto a glass, you know, when they're drinking. Or if it does happen, how do they, you know, take... You know, any tips and tricks that you can give to people to enhance their beauty that they can do for themselves in the morning, people will now come to you for advice. All right. What are you doing in order to show people that you actually know what you're talking about by giving away your stuff so that they know that you're the person that they can trust? All right. I know people in the hair industry, they're always going out to want to fill seats on on their chairs or in their salon or something like that. But are you giving people vital information so that they know how to do it themselves? And if you've got a scarcity mindset, you might think if I tell them how to do it, they're going to do it by themselves. Remember. People are so lazy, Christy, all right? They would rather have somebody do it for them, but they want to know you are the right person that can do it for them. So you literally have to help them by actually helping them. Something like what I'm doing right now, helping you by actually helping you. Create content that your customers can share, that your customers can refer to, and when the time is right, they will look you up and want to do business with you. You know why? Because they want to reciprocate the favor that you've given them. Christy. All right. Does that answer your question? Okay. So every time you're putting out that content, it, it positions your company and it situates your company as front of mind for your customers. Everybody's been bombarded with thousands and thousands of, of, of uh, messages every single day. How is your business standing out? How are you making a difference in people's lives in such a way that they feel like you've done them a service or a favor? Every favor re demands to be reciprocated. Okay, so that's how you position yourself by actually helping your customers, you know, have a life that's either, you know, have a happier existence and they will remember you for when they actually need your kind of service. All right. Paul Harris says people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That is absolutely right. Because people don't care about you as a business. They don't care about what you know about the hairstyle. They care about looking good. They care about feeling good about themselves. So you might as well start the process of them feeling good about themselves. In, you, know, in, you know, inversely, they start feeling good about your business and they'll look you up. But I know maybe you're not going to implement any of these things there, Kirsty. You know why? Because the people in your industry, they just want to cut hair and not worry about, you know, their target audiences. You need to know exactly why your customers are coming to you. You need to know exactly why you not your competition and create that atmosphere that they feel comfortable to come to you all the time when they really need a, a, a service that you can provide. Okay, so I'm really hoping that, you know, when you put out your products out there or your, or your services, they are situated in, on top of mind of your customers so that whenever they do think about, you know, utilizing your, your hair cutting services or your hair color or your extensions or whatever it is that you're offering, they are going to look up for Christy and they're not going to look up for Sally down the road because Sally hasn't given them anything they want to reciprocate with. So that's now how you position yourself by being the person that's knowledgeable about your industry, that's knowledgeable about, you know, tips and tricks. And people can always refer to videos. People can always refer to blogs or whatever it is that you're putting out there that can help them actually, you know, um, you know, manage, you know, their, their, their beauty and their outlook on life. All right. So you want to look at what, what, what your competition is doing and do the exact opposite. A lot of people in the hair industry, they are not, you know, helping their customers once they leave the door. 
And they expect those people to come back again. But how many videos do you watch yourself tutorials about how to put on lipstick or mascara? If you could do that for your customers, wouldn't they remember you when, you, when they're looking for you, um, you know, um, when they're looking for your service? So after that, people will start asking you questions just like you are right now. And now I know that you actually don't know how to position yourself. Now that creates a customer need that needs to be filled for me. Now, how will you know what your customers need if you're not going out there and presenting problems for them to, and, and solutions that they can solve? They now know your company's capabilities. They now know and they can trust you. Because you are dealing with people's hair. You're dealing with people's beauty. That's a lot of insecurities all bundled into one. And if you're the person that can provide back that security for them, they would want to do business with you. All right? So, you know, there's usually key assumptions, you know, related to, to positioning and how your product is envisioned on the market. Um, I remember I was reading a story once about the CEO of Coca-Cola. All right. So that was, uh, I think, three years ago. And, you know, they hired a, a design company so that they can help enhance the brand of Coca-Cola, of which it doesn't need to be enhanced. But, you know, they hired all these, um, you know, sh neatly shaven guys that um, that we know these days that work in design firms. And then, um, you know, they're drinking, you know, coffees that have last names and stuff like that. You know, those minimalist people that really just want things to be even just one squiggly line or one line. And that's a brand. So they went in and then they won the contract to, um, you know, change the brand appearance and design an appeal and shelf appeal for the Coca-Cola bottle. They came in and then they created a different, unique, futuristic, um, you know, shape of the Coca-Cola bottle. And then they came to... Um, when they came to present it, the whole, you know, presentation boardroom was covered in white, um, you know, decoration. So it was like white. And then there was a little box or a little step that had the Coca-Cola bottle on there. And then they had lights showing on the Coca-Cola bottle. And then they explained how it was ergonomic and how it was all fancy and the, 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 the materials that were used on the bottle were all, um, you know, environmentally friendly, etc., etc. And the CEO of Coca-Cola says, wow, this looks nice. This looks futuristic. But there's only one test that we need to do. We need to see what this bottle looks like in a shelf of other products that are already on the market. All right. So because you know why? In the shop, there's not going to be all these fancy lights. There's not going to be all these white, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, decorations that you put on there. The customer sees what the customer sees, all right? So that was a positioning statement that even if your product, you think that your product is the best on the market or it looks and feels good, what does the customer see? Now, that's the language that you need to start thinking in. What am I doing in order to make sure that I am front of mind of my customer and my product is appealing better than what my competition is doing? All right. It's not about you anymore. So how are you going to know if you haven't positioned yourself? How are you going to know if you haven't put out content and people have started asking you questions and want to know more about your stuff? All right. So before you start the whole process of developing a, a positioning, um, you know, agenda within your business, there's usually three key assumptions that you have to keep in mind to actually gain the attention of your audience. You must put you must put yourself in their shoes and you must thoroughly, you know, understand what their attitudes and what their values are. We might think right now, I might think that I'm actually giving you value while in there. You're probably looking at, oh, doesn't he have shirts that fit or he's worn that tie before? I think this is the second time he's doing this or I don't understand him. I'm just going to scroll past. We don't know what your customers are thinking. So you need to be in their shoes so that you can understand them and see things in their own eyes. Now, how do you do that? How do you understand what your customer wants? You have to ask questions and be around them and actually try and break your product in as much as you are the customer who's paying for it. Would you buy from yourself? Can you type in the, the answer there? Would you purchase your own product if you didn't know yourself? Would you buy from yourself? Hmm? 
your product right now, would you would you buy your own product? So when it comes to offering, you know, just because you 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 studied your your industry for for a long time, it doesn't matter to the people. No matter what qualifications you have, people just want something that helps them alleviate their pain. Now, as marketers or business owners, we we frequently believe that prospects think as we do, and and they already understand what we're offering. Some people lose out on business, and the reason why they lose out on business is because people don't actually know what they do. People don't know what they sell. And that's the reason why you might find that, yes, people like your stuff out of pity, but they don't actually purchase from you because they don't understand what it is that you help them. This is because our prospects, they really share the same thought process. The reason why... You know, this is like that is because they only take three seconds to look at your website. You, you take three months trying to fix it. So you know the ins and outs and how your website works. But if your customer cannot just click something that relates to them or works for them, they're already gone. They're on to the next thing. Because you've got to make it easy for them and really, really simple for them to actually get acquainted with your offering. Now, you can't just hear something once and then understand it. You have to continuously hear it. And what are you doing in order to perpetuate that, um, you know, consistent hearing of, 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 of you know, your, 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 your customers, um, I mean, of your customers hearing of your offers. You know what I always say? People need to hear your product at least six to eight times. That's how positioning is done. You have to make sure that people actually understand that you're the person that can help them with their service. You're the person that can help them with their offer or whatever problem they might be going through. All right. So we are the only people that actually care about our offering. We are the only people that care about our products. Our customers don't. We are the only people that care about our service and how our branding colors look like. Our customers don't. All right. So as marketers, we we're always sometimes believing that, you know what I mean? The, the market has been waiting for years for for the offering that we have. And when when we think that we just put out a post today and people automatically understand that, oh, my God, we've needed this for all this time. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. People are busy. Right now, you might be sitting on the toilet. Right now, you might be sitting on the tram. Right now, you might be sitting in front of a TV, watching Netflix, and then you just scrolled past this video. You might be working and it's playing in the background, whichever way it is. Nobody's waiting for this lunch and learn at 2 p.m. I have to make sure I'm consistent about it. And nobody even cares because they're also busy working. And it's very true. Do you know what I mean? So... At the end of the day, don't expect people to just jump on your offer just because it's Nicole, just because it's Esther, just because it's Sally. You need to constantly show them what benefits are you helping them with. And you need to describe it consistently to the market. And that's how you stand out. Then after a little bit of a while, the market will start caring. Not because... Over the weekend, you had an idea and then you you created a website for it and then you had a landing page for it and then automatically you think you can just throw it into the market. That's the reason why people like Coca-Cola, people like Pepsi, people like McDonald's, who doesn't know them already, but they're constantly letting you know of the offers they have. They're constantly letting you know that their food hasn't changed. It's still crap, but you know what? They're front of mind. All right? So people that we're dealing with, they're already a skeptical audience. Do you think you're the first person to come in and say, hi, my name is Prosper and I'm a digital marketer. Do you think I'm the first person to, do you think you're the first person to be a hairdresser in in the, in the area? Do you think you're the first person to be a fitness trainer that has come to them? People are already skeptical. What are you doing in order to get their trust? Because people only do business with those that they know, like, and trust. All right, so if you're assuming that people are going to like you, but if they don't trust you, they're not going to give you their credit card. And the competition is also making it difficult because you know why? They're increasing that cynicism from your customers. 
Some of them are stealing every single day from your customer. Some of them are not providing that service. You have to become the different person that differentiates themselves from the market. And how do you do this? You go in and you start knowing your customer. This makes a big, big difference. If you know your customer by name, if you know what they're doing, how they serve people, etc., etc., you are head and shoulders ahead of somebody else who's just guessing. All right? So at least when you know them, you now know if your product is a direct fit for them. And then you now have a moral obligation to say, you know what, I know you've been doing your marketing wrong. This is how you do it. Let me show you. You know why? Because you've been listening. Okay? So at the end of the day, you need to ask yourself this question. What is my target mark and customer's current pressing problem? And if you can solve that problem, then you've, got, you've earned the right to show up in their newsfeed. Because if you haven't earned the right with the customer and you, you haven't been seen by them enough, no way are they going to come around to you and no way are you going to expect um, you know, for them to just quickly rush to your store or your, your service or your website or whatever it is that you're offering these days. All right? Customers are being overwhelmed with communication in today's um, really fast pace. I mean, I, I read somewhere where it says people receive up to 10,000, between 5,000 and 10,000 messages a day. And then there's your message. Do you expect them to, 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 to remember it? You know, and, and people have become experts in filtering out those messages. So if you're not helping them, they're not listening to you. And most of the messages that are on your newsfeed, some of them are very irrelevant and they won't get noticed. So you want to make sure you know your customer, you know what your service is going to provide and how you can actually provide that service by actually helping them. So there's no way they're going to have to think about it and come back. No, you help them instantly and then now they owe you. So that's how you position yourself. And in the process, know what your competition is doing and do the exact opposite of that. You know why? Because if your customers are complaining about something, the people that you are looking out for, they are already dealing with somebody. They are already paying someone right now, a competitor. So what are you doing to gain their confidence so that they stop paying your competition? And then at the end of the day, just identify that sweet spot that you are not going to burn out. Make sure you're doing something you absolutely love because this is a long-term game. Game. If you're just going to dabble into something today just because it looks good, oh, you're going to run short. You won't be able to do um, you know, videos like this that actually prove that you are the person that people need to start working with. You know why? Because you're proving and, um, and, 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 and enforcing in people's minds that you actually know what you talk about. People are tired of one-click wonders. So make sure you know your message, you know what your market is, and whatever media you're going to use is, will help you position yourself as a person that can uh, be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable and actually help your prospects have you know, lives that are of a happier existence. I'm more than happy to help you out, figure out what it is that you're doing so that you can really avoid duplicating, you know, your, your messaging at all costs and you're actually positioning yourself to be unique so that nobody can actually copy what you do and you're just standing out in the market so that if people think of a hairdresser, they go out and look for Kirsty. If people are looking for a fitness trainer, they go and look out for Sally or Tim, which is what it is that you're doing. All right, you got to know and you need to know and address your bias number one problem. And when you do that, you can be special, my friend. People will start, you know, hitting down your door so that you can provide them that service. You, you now get into the, the, the bias ecosystem. You're no longer being filtered and you now stand out from the crowd. The only benefit of this, guys, is to make sure that you are now front of mind. Even when you ask your customer at 2 a.m. when they're waking up, they know that Prosper will help you earn more money with less struggle. 
But you need to communicate that benefit consistently so that your customers get to know who you are and that you are the person that can solve that problem. And there, my friend, after you do do that, you will be a special person in their mind and you will now be able to position yourself. And that is why positioning actually matters. Now, my question to you is, do you actually know what you're serving your clients? Hmm? Do you know what you're serving your, pri- your, your clients? What is your customer's most pressing problem at the moment? If you can solve that, my friend, you're going to be a champion. Thank you so much for tuning in and thanks for the patience. I know there, there was um, interruptions earlier on, but those that were tuning in and those that are going to be watching in post-production, thank you so much. Let's continue this conversation in the, uh, in the comments below. Enjoy the rest of your week, guys.